Hello and welcome to the May Day special episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you stories of news developments from across the world. Our headlines. On May Day, working class movements across the world resolved to continue struggle. Amazon and other delivery sector workers in the US on strike on May Day. The International Labour Organization warns of worldwide job losses calls on governments to protect workers and Cuban embassy in the US attacked by unknown gunman. In our first story, today is May 1st, an International Workers' Day, when the workers of the world celebrate the victories and struggles of the past and renew their commitment to fight for a better and more just world. This May Day takes place in unprecedented circumstances, where the COVID-19 pandemic has affected their ability to organize on the streets, even as governments and employers attack their rights. However, the workers of the world are determined to fight back and protect their rights. In our May Day special episode, we bring you voices from trade unions across the world of organizations and activists resisting capitalism and anti-worker policies. First from India, we have Dr. K. Hemlata, the president of the Center of Indian Trade Unions. She talks about the way protests are still being held despite the lockdown and what are the key demands of workers. Uh, from what we can all estimate, from what it seems is that the condition is not going to get better anytime soon and it is the working class which is going to keep suffering the more. So in this situation, what protest actions have been organized by C2? What are they planning to do uh, in the future and what are the demands that are being put forward? Actually, we have already started. On 21st April, we had a All India protest day. The demand is one at that time, this demand has come up. The government is uh, thinking of increasing the working hours. So that was one of the major demands. But in addition to that, this uh, cash transfer of 7,500, no retrenchment, payment of wages, and then protective equipment, gloves, masks, etc., to the frontline health workers and all the needy, taking care of the migrant workers, providing them shelter, providing them food, etc. All these were the major demands. The slogan was Bhashan Nahi Ration Sayye. Bhashan Nahi Vetan Sayye, Bhashan Nahi Artik Sahayta Sayye. For the peasants, it is time for the harvest. They don't have money for the harvesting. They don't have money for transfer of their products to the cities, transport, etc. So with these demands, we organized a protest demonstration all over the country, like maintaining physical distance, I'm maintaining all the guidelines under lockdown. People stand with the placards showing these demands and the flags in their hands. And at 10.30 in their own houses, along with their family members, or wherever possible, the union offices or the CIT offices like that, we have asked them to stand and raise their voice. Because till now, they have been hearing a lot of bhashan, a lot of advices, they have practiced that. Now it is time that their voices need to be heard. And for 10 minutes, they have given slogan. And the response was beyond our expectation. In all the 22 states in the country, except of course, uh, uh, where we have our present CITU, in Tripura, the government did not allow the threatened of uh, uh, vindictive actions, etc. But in, uh, everywhere, including Jammu and Kashmir, to all the states, around uh, 55,000 uh, centers, this was held, and in more than 400 districts. Out of the 718 districts in the country, this program was held in 408 districts in the country more than 55,000 places and approximately 5 lakh people have participated. This was means beyond totally our expect, expectation within a short do, uh, uh, notice. Through social media, through telephone, they have communicated and they have responded. And again on May Day, we said that with this, no wage cuts, no retrenchment, no 12-hour works, tax the rich, tax the super rich and save the poor. Today, the super rich, even the wealth tax was removed in 2016-17 union budget by the BJP government. So even if you restore the wealth tax, if you tax the 953 people who are billionaires, whose minimum uh, wealth is more than 5,000 crores, even you tax these people, the government can 
definitely a lot around 10% of the GDP for the meeting this situation. It is not impossible. Instead of doing that, the government is cutting on the DA of the central government employees. They are withholding the uh, dearness elements, increase in the dearness elements up to 2021 July. They are asking the government employees to pay including the retirees, pensioners also. So the government is pushing the entire burden on the common people, not the super rich. And the IRS officers who have suggested that they, they should tax the rich, the super rich, and action has been taken against them. Three of their uh, senior leaders of the IRS association, they have been charged, treated, including their general secretary. So this is the attitude of the government. So you know, on May Day also, we have decided with these slogans, we'll similarly organize uh, in a wider scale. And in the coming days also, we have to think about, we can't go on keeping silent when the government goes on attacking the workers and their rights. So despite the lockdown, we have evolved uh, measures and how to express our people's uh, anxieties and voice their demands and in the coming days definitely we have to unite. In the 21st program we have appealed to the Kisan Sabha, to the Agricultural Workers Union, women and so many other sections, students, youth etc. and everybody responded. So this time also the call has been given along with the other trade unions, not only CITU, uh, AITUC, INTUC, HMS, and the other trade unions also have joined together in giving this call of protest on May Day. Uh, their own flags, they will carry their own flags and these demands, formal demands, and in their offices and uh, houses, maintaining the physical distancing, not the social distancing. We want social unity and not the social distance. So maintaining physical distance, unitedly voicing our demands, we have decided to raise our protest. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, that's all the time we have. Keep watching News Click and People's News. The world's largest lockdown is in place in India, even as the government and key capitalists have been suggesting steps to increase working hours. We next speak to Patrick Correa of the CGT Metal Workers Union in France on organizing in the time of the pandemic. The CGT was in the forefront of the historic protests in France over President Emmanuel Macron's pension reforms. Korea talks about the kind of solidarity that is emerging nationally and internationally at this time. So could you talk a bit about the sort of solidarity actions that workers, workers unions, workers organizations have been conducting in France to basically help their fellow comrades at this time of need? Well, uh... Uh, solidarity is uh, really important at the moment, if that's true, but uh, the, uh, I think the main concerns about the fact that uh, we, the solidarity is to, to, to provide at the, at the moment all the, uh, I would say, um, basic needs that our members have to, to get when they go to work, uh, masks, uh, gel, uh, you know, gloves, and so our, our process is to give them what we should have, and also our support during the, this crisis. Right. So um, there's a lot of solidarity it's also between, I would say, uh, the workers and among themselves actually during this crisis. And what's shown this crisis is that actually, even we, if we are locked down, in, uh, we are separated from all of, uh, I would say, our comrades, but we have never been to work, so talking so much, actually. Uh, we talk, uh, we, uh, we use the new ways of communication like we are using today to communicate a lot and exchange a lot. So, uh, and we have never been such a good, I uh, would say, communication and uh, exchange of information uh, between, uh, among our workers, actually. And this is between, even between uh, workers that have never talked to each other from different companies, from different sectors. That, that's the kind of solidarity we act in, actually. We have a solidarity we show is also about the protect the, the, the migrants that have come to, to France. We are trying to get, I would say, uh, measures to protect them uh, they are, because they are lost in this situation. Right. We are trying to protect the, the persons that are actually in the streets. We've, uh, we are confronting the COVID-19. We are trying to provide food in some areas where they don't get food because they, are, they don't have no money or not access to, to supermarkets. We're trying to do everything we can at the local level to, to help them, at the national level, to organize what should be the role of state 
it to, to fulfill the basic needs of all the citizens and population of this country. Right. And finally, it's a larger question. So one of the key challenges both right now and in the coming months for trade unions will be on organizing itself. So, uh, you know, how do you organize at a time when people are maybe a bit more scared to come out in rallies and big processions and marches? Uh, how do you do meetings? So what are the kind of ideas that uh, you in the CGT have been thinking about regarding how to engage workers both right now and in the immediate months? Well, um, you, actually, we're talking about May Day. May Day is an important day for all the working class around the world, and uh, especially in France. It's a really important day for us as unions. It's the first time ever that we are not be able to rally exactly. in the street of Paris. So uh, that is, uh, we, have no, we are in, in the industry, that's the first time ever. So um, you see, this is just crazy. So we have to find new ways of, of protesting, acting, and uh, we, we so we have been very, very active in the uh, by, by the communication networks. We are using uh, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, all the different systems to communicate. And now tomorrow, I say uh, all our members are encouraged to put leaflets leaflets in in front of their uh, flats, homes to protest mm -hmm. and about the actual situation. The, uh, our health. Is, uh, is is more important than their money. Right. So well, that's that's the main message we want to to address to be our politics and the employers and capital at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, what shows this? Uh, what I told you is that this um, this uh, crisis shows that we have a capacity to even be more efficient. We have tools, but we are not using them. We have not been using them properly, and now we are using them. And we can see we can be even more efficient than capital itself when you're using it correctly. Right. So, I'm 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 looking I'm looking after the international issues in uh, in Metal Workers Federation. I've never been so in contact with all my comrades around the world and especially in Europe. We have exchanges every day by by uh, by Skype on uh, the situation in different companies and the situation of the countries. What are their what are their problems? How can we can help them? So we have never been talking so much. I think that's the way to to deal about internationalism. It's about a way to also to build, I would say, an inter international uh, uh, struggle against the capital is by communicating, and we are not being communicating enough. And you're talking about organizing. That's a key problem at the moment. When we don't have, uh, where workers are not working, this is this is uh, difficult. So we have been trying to organize many meetings as we can. We are providing many information that we can, mm -hmm. because the telework the workers are actually teleworking. They have no information uh, from their companies. We are mm -hmm. trying to send them any information they can get. All the uh, advices we can we can deliver them. We are trying to do so. And in the companies, well, uh, even when we are co uh, the companies where we are working, the, the, our delegates are there. They are, they are, we are, they are with the worker, you know. They are, uh, are just cl close to the workers every day. So uh, some, uh, many of our delegates actually in hospital because they have been working with our, with our members. That we don't care because we have to do so. That's our duty to, to be close to them uh, and uh, help them every day. That's a way of organizing too. And I, the capital, that we are trying to do is to use. These health uh, health measures from the government, you know, the lockdown, to to uh, to forbidden the access to the companies. Right. We have been to tribunal, to to, uh, to the courts, and uh, the court said we the CGT has been banned from many companies because they said we cannot go into the company because of because of health issues. Right. But the court recognized the fact that our our delegates, our members, have a right to go in, inside the company. So what we are trying to do, and we are duty when we are in the companies, is to. To make the, to, to to condemn to go to court to tell them you don't respect the health and safety measures. Right. Thank you so much, Patrick, for talking to us. Thank you, thank you, Prasan. Take care. And here is a message from the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa, which has been in the forefront of some of the most militant labor struggles of recent times against the neoliberal policies of the Cyril Ramaphosa government. NUMSA press statement dated 1st May 2020. NUMSA May Day statement. For the first time in decades, the bulk of the working class in South Africa is forced to celebrate Workers' Day behind closed doors at home and are unable to fully commemorate this day the way we are used to 
because of the coronavirus pandemic. This deadly virus has swept through the globe, infecting millions of people. So far, over 3 million people have been infected and over 200,000 have perished. Our members are experiencing extreme hardship at this time. Brutal employers have taken advantage of the coronavirus pandemic to down very conditions and restructure. Some workers have been forced to endure the lockdown with no money as no work, no pay policies are implemented. Others have forcibly had their leave days deducted whilst some might have to prepare for mass retrenchments after the lockdown. At the same time, employers are cutting corners on health and safety, demanding that workers return to work when they've done very little to prepare the workplace to prevent further COVID-19 infections. The working class is enduring a relentless and violent attack from the bosses. As NUMSA, in the short term, what we must do is we must be uncompromising in our demands for a safe, sanitized workspace, and at the same time, we must continue to make demands for a living, wa- for a living wage. The coronavirus pandemic has shown us that it is the lowest paid workers, the essential workers, who are actually driving the battle against this virus. And going forward, a united working class is the only weapon capable of destroying this corrupt and brutal capitalist system which is responsible for the suffering of of the masses and which continues to breed inequality, poverty and unemployment. It's time for the working class to stop surrendering its power to butchers and for it to lead and drive an agenda for genuine transformation in its own interests and for the benefit of society at large. The time will come when the masses will take power for themselves and in so doing, it will finally be able to undo the great injustice of the apartheid system and capitalism and create a just society where the wealth of the nation is used to benefit all and not just the elite. The statement was issued on behalf of Comrade Irvin Jim, the NUMSA General Secretary. For more information, please contact Pagamile Hlubi Majola, NUMSA National Spokesperson. In our next story, we go to the United States where delivery warehouse workers have walked out of work as part of a countrywide campaign today for better workplace safety and increased pay. Employees of major companies such as Amazon, FedEx and Walmart among others will call in sick at their workplaces as part of the protest. Warehousing and delivery workers in the US are considered part of essential services that are required to remain open. Workers have been complaining of unsafe conditions during the outbreak and the lack of measures to protect their wages and jobs. In a report by The Intercept, Daniel Steinbrook, an employee at one of Amazon's subsidiaries, Whole Foods, said that the workers at Amazon and its subsidiary, along with workers from other major companies like Instacart and Target, are striking in a show of workers' solidarity. They also pointed out that the fight is for all essential workers, better protection and benefits during the time of the pandemic. Amazon in particular has been criticized by workers for not following necessary safety measures that need to be taken up during the pandemic and for their lack of transparent policy over the spread of the disease among workers. We talked to Chris Smalls, who was fired from Amazon last month shortly after he raised the issue of the lack of safety measures at the company's center in in Staten Island in New York. Smalls is one of the key organizers of today's protest. Chris, thank you so much for talking to us. So could you- Absolutely, thank you for having me. So could you first talk about what was the origin of this walkout protest? Because uh, this is uh, this has quite become quite a big protest. Major companies across the world, their employees are involved in this. So, could you tell us a bit about the organizing that went around it, and what are the key demands? Absolutely. Um, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, you know, for the last couple of weeks, uh, we've seen a number of uh, different protests and strikes all across the country um, regarding health and safety concerns. Um, um, after my termination, my first walkout a month ago. Um, there's been other buildings and other people, other employees from other companies that's been willing to uh, speak up on this matter. So um, what I decided to do was form an alliance between all these companies, all these entities, uh, because we all have one common goal. We put a, we put aside who we work for um, because we all have one common goal to protect our health and our safety. Um, so I've been orchestrating these conference calls every week, um, formulating a plan to uh uh, that led to May 1st, which is tomorrow's walkout. And um, that's what we've been doing. We're just mobilizing to our voices are heard and our demands are met. Um, our demands are simple. Uh, we just want to uh, be retro paid for all the unpaid time that we were forced to use the entire month of March. 
Um, we want every building that has a case in it to be shut down and uh, professionally sanitized. Uh, we want the companies to be honest and transparent at all times. Um, how many cases are in these buildings? And uh, most importantly, we want to have our PPE um, provided at all times and uh, sanitation um, items provided at all times by the company. And for the company to uh, make sure that they're doing, they follow through with this. Um, that's pretty much that. And Chris, let's talk a bit about Amazon itself. So you've been working, you were working with Amazon from 2015. And you mm -hmm. were actually supervising quite a few employees as well. So could you take us through what happened when you raised some of these concerns and what was the response of the management? Yeah, when I started to raise concerns, um, it was pretty much um, no response. You know, uh, it was business as usual. Um, at the time, when I first started, there was no confirmed cases in the building where I worked. Um, so they were really nonchalant about it. Um, that that forced me to uh, send out emails to the health department, to the CDC department, to the state government of New York department. Um, when I didn't receive uh, responses, that's when I started to mobilize uh, a walkout. But it, what led up to that is the fact that um, I sat in a building for an entire week starting on March 24th, um, off the clock on my own free will, um, raising my concerns to the general manager's office um, every single day. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, March 28th, that's Saturday, the day they quarantined me. Um, I sat in the cafeteria for eight hours a day um, with a number of associates um, every single day voicing our concerns because we were working or exposed to somebody who tested positive. Um, when we didn't get um, any answers and they kept giving us a bunch of excuses, that's when um, I started to take further action. In the interim period, there have been many more cases of people resigning as well of Amazon taking further action. And I think the latest numbers collected by independent sources show that there are over 600 cases in various Amazon facilities. You had put out a tweet today regarding that. So could you talk a bit Absolutely. about uh, at the national level, what has been the company's response also? Because we do know that uh, Amazon executives discussed your case and uh, they, 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 prepared, they prepared points to assassinate your character, to talk ill about you and said mm -hmm. that we'll go for a standard response. Right. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing, you know, if I wasn't telling the truth, um, that that meeting that they were talking about me would have never existed. Um, but we all know what type of people um, they are now. They've been exposed um, and it's not good. Um, it looks bad on their end and it's a shame. Um, they don't care about employees' health and safety. They rather worry about uh, me, Christian Smalls. Um, but it's never going to be Amazon versus Christian Smalls. It's going to be Amazon versus the people. Um, that's why more people are starting to speak up. That's why there's been more strikes and walkouts over the past couple of weeks. Um, in response, the company has been retaliating against um, everybody that speak up and they've been terminating them. But that's not the right response. And um, that's why we continue to mobilize. And we're going to do that again tomorrow on May 1st. In the meanwhile, the International Labour Organization has published its report, COVID-19 and the World of Work, on the eve of May Day. The report's third edition asks the governments world over to take proactive social security and relief measures to protect the most vulnerable sections of their working class as they see a massive rise in unemployment and job loss. According to the UN body, 1.6 billion workers employed mostly in the informal economy are facing the risk of loss of employment in the short and medium term. This is almost half of the total estimated workforce in the world. Such job losses are a direct impact of the economic disruption caused by the containment measures imposed by different governments. According to the report, 68% of workers across the globe are living in countries where these lockdowns have been mandated, making most of them vulnerable to losing wages or jobs and other fiscal shocks. In our final story, in the early hours of Thursday, a terrorist attack was perpetrated against the Cuban embassy in the US in Washington. According to a statement by the Cuban Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bruno Rodriguez, an unknown man shot several times at the embassy's building using an assault rifle. At the time of the attack, 10 Cuban officials and diplomats were inside the building. None of the diplomatic officials or any other staff members were injured. The attacker was arrested by local authorities at the scene and is currently in their custody. Cuban, the Cuban foreign minister condemned the attack and urged the US government to fulfill the responsibilities attributed to it in the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations and ensure the safety and security of Cuban diplomatic staff in its mission. The minister called for greater cooperation from the US authorities in clarifying the facts and guaranteeing that such incidents would not be repeated or go unpunished. He said that the Cuban government awaited the investigation by the US government authorities on the identity 
and motivations of the perpetrator as well as under circumstances surrounding the act. That's all we have in this episode of the International Lady Roundup. To know more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, avanza ya.